Hey guys, welcome back to a new video and as I promised, I'll be doing a face reveal once I get the 10k subscribers. So I'm really grateful to have you all on this journey and finally we made it. So here I am with the new face reveal video and today we'll be talking about eye doors vulnerabilities. So let's have a look. So basically we are going to talk about the methodology, how you can look for idle vulnerabilities in a web applications you're hunting on. So recently I found few vulnerabilities on a program that I cannot mention because it's responsible disclosure, but I'm going to tell you how I found it and what steps you can take to find such vulnerabilities while you are pen testing or bug hunting. Let's go through some steps that can help you find idle vulnerabilities. The first one among is to find a good target. What I mean by good target, basically application that has lots of functionalities like adding a user, deleting a user, some user level permissions, admin level permissions, roles, something like that. So basically like an enterprise application or application that handle businesses or seller applications similar to that. These applications are more likely vulnerable to IDORs because based on my experience, these were the apps where I found most of the idors. So when you find such an application, the first thing you do is to start analyzing the workflow. Don't start testing quickly. Look for the functionalities, how they are working. Explore every single functionality and also explore the functionality based on the user with less permissions. Once you get the idea of how the application is working, you can also think of the ideas of how it can be exploited or, and what things are not supposed to happen. So when you have a good idea about the application like mapping it, you can go to step number two, which is testing. So once you find all the functionalities, focus on the endpoints that has unique identifiers like UUIDs or some could be random IDs like alphanumeric IDs or numeric IDs only. So if there is only numeric IDs, the chances of the severity of your vulnerability is higher. But if this is alphanumeric, it could be a medium level bug, but still valid. And if it's UUID, then it could be low or medium. It depends if you can find some endpoint and get the IDs from other endpoint that is exploitable. For example, you can get the UUIDs of other users or see the UUIDs of different users. So cases like that happens too, you know, where you see the UUIDs of every user through an endpoint, like it reveals you everything in the response. So I've seen such reports as well. Keep that in mind and then you can move on to step number three, which is exploiting it. Don't worry, of course, I'm going to show you some practical example as well. So in step three, you look for those endpoints, get it in your burp repeater. And from there, you start testing. You test it by creating two accounts. So basically you have an admin account, you have another admin account. In that case, you can check for cross tenant vulnerabilities. Basically check if as an admin, you can access the functionalities of a different admin like can you add users to a different admin account or can you delete users from a different admin account if that's possible through a particular identifier then it's an idle vulnerability so keep that in mind so let's say if an admin has added on the user and that user has only read level permissions now if that user with the read level permissions can also perform some actions like adding other users to admin account, then that's also an idle vulnerability if it is happening through an identifier. So yeah, basically now you know that there are two ways of testing this. First is cross-tenant and second is in-tenant. In cross-tenant, you try to exploit the users who belong to a different organization, while in the same tenants, you try to exploit users that belongs to your organization, but with different roles or permission sets. So keep that in mind. Let's try to understand this report, which is reported on Hacker1 2024, so it's not too old. Insecure Direct Object Reference allows viewing private report details via bugs.json endpoint. So, 
I found that any private reports can be accessed by sending a post request to this slash bugs.json endpoint. This vulnerable endpoint requires organization ID, which takes the organization ID as the value, and it also requires text query, which is used to search for report IDs within this org. Now you can append the example organization on the policy page, like 58579, so this is the organization ID. If you look at the request, as you can see here, here we have the JSON file and then we have the organization ID and then some other values like persist, uh, PG search and some other value. We have the POC video which is radicted but it's okay. So by changing the value which is the organization ID, an attacker can see reports of different users and those reports include title, URL, ID state, uh, readable substate created at submitted add on poster name okay so this one is a critical with 9.3 severity obviously it is because you're able to see pretty much every information related to a report of a different user okay that was a nice one let's have a look at another report so let's move on to the second report the second one is reported to activist so basically he created an account on activist and checked the settings page so this goes with slash cms slash reader and slash account and we have the request here so let me zoom in a little bit to show you the parameters okay so here we have max file size loading style editing begin and we have this id over here and another we have another ID that is 346626 and then we have the username which is basically the email. Now as you can see there is an ID parameter on the request data. It's our user ID and it's vulnerable to IDOR. So we can change any user's email address. When I first looked at this request, I thought he maybe is going to modify the editing begin parameter because I thought maybe we can edit anyone's account by changing the IDs. That could also happen, but in this case, the ID parameter is vulnerable, not the editing begin. Okay, so here we have the steps to reproduce. Go to login page, log into your account, and then go to slash reader slash account and open your proxy program. Proxy program? Okay, change the email and click save and then the request change the ID to your test account's ID. What about the request? Now you can reset uh, victim's password. Hmm. So basically what he's doing, he captured the request and for, for testing purposes, he might have created two accounts, account A and account B, and they both have their own user IDs. So to test for IDOR here, he basically replaced the ID of account A to account B and then change the email value as well. So, so now the attacker owns the victim's account by changing the email and he did that through the ID parameter which was vulnerable to IDOR. Impact this account takeover without user interaction. Pretty crazy. Let's look at the severity. As I figured, it is critical. As he's saying, also this endpoint accepts any email, even the registered emails. I think you should fix it too. Yeah, this happens too in the recent medium level bug I found. In there, you can add the email of uh, any registered account from a different organization which you shouldn't be able to do so because it is already registered in a different organization so always keep that in mind okay guys now let's talk about the bug that i found and reported on hacker one so this was a responsible disclosure program that's why i cannot mention you the domain i reported on but i can give you an idea about what the bug was and how i exploited it so basically that application is a delivery service application where individuals and companies can create their accounts and they can parcel stuff from one location to another so kind of a bit uh, complex application with lots of lots of endpoints so there was this functionality where i can add applications so like driver applications or company applications but the bug i reported on was on driver applications so you have to fill the form which includes a phone number email address a company name and some other pictures like license vehicle license the vehicle number and some other identifiers which is pretty sensitive all of the government ids and stuff you can include that in the application as well so 
this itself also makes it sensitive. But what happened here is there was a particular ID assigned to each application. So I basically created two accounts and I tried to manipulate the IDs. As you can see in the screenshot, this is the ID over here. So the ID was in the URL itself and it is put HTTP method. And as you can see, the ID has this particular number 32929. So it's pretty simple number. And because there is no proper access control in this case, I was able to modify this ID and send a request. And in the response, you can see some details of the user whom this ID actually belonged to. So, so 32929 is actually the ID of the victim that I added in this put request. And now you must be thinking, okay, this is PI data leak, but there's another thing going on here. When you perform this put HTTP method, the application gets added in the attacker's account. Now that's get crazier. That's why it got critical because not just you can see the information or retrieve the information related to a different application of a different user, you can also perform action, which is basically including their application in your account so this was a bit crazy so after writing a pretty detailed report on this and adding lots of screenshots they validated it and triaged the report and awarded me with 1500 dollar bondi for each idol bug so that was a pretty good one okay guys that's it for this video i hope you enjoyed watching this video and don't comment me in the comment section because this is literally my first rails reel video and i was feeling a bit awkward while recording this but i hope you enjoyed it anyways so thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one